everybody, welcome back to another session of The Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr and tonight I'm going to share probably the best value in beer with you. If you're not already familiar with Lagunitas Hop Stupid, I'm telling you, it is the best value in beer as far as I'm concerned. This 22 ounce bottle cost anywhere from $3.29 to $3.59, I've seen it sometimes $3.99. Most of the time though it's about $3.59 for this bottle and I've had it on numerous occasions um, so I'm finally getting it on the show mainly because I wanted to get word out about how affordable it is but also how great it is. Now recently, you know, over the last couple weeks, uh, even month, I've reviewed Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder, uh, Russian Rivers Pliny the Younger, Bell's Hop Slam, and those are all really great IPAs or Imperial IPAs. The reason why I wanted to bring this one into the mix though is that a lot of people out there think, you know, if I wanted to try Bell's Hop Slam, what's, what's a, something easier to get that tastes like that? What's similar to Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder that I can get in my market? Or that's cheaper or just easier to obtain? But I think this one of every beer that I've had out there is probably as close to Pliny the Elder as I've come. Now I'm not saying that it's you know on that level, but I think just in terms of the lightness of it, and you'll see the color when I pour it, uh, the amount of flavor that they get in there, I really hold this in high regard. So with that said, and, and this is you know this is an IPA again, it's 102 IBUs, uh, right at 8%. Um, alcohol by volume. Um, again, it's from Lagunitas out of Petaluma, California. And in fact, Petaluma, California is fairly close to Santa Rosa. So, um, you know, talking about the Russian River Pliny the Elder, yeah, even the cap smells good on the inside. But let's go ahead and start pouring this one. And you can see right away that this one's got a pretty light color on it. And when I say light color, basically all I mean is that sometimes you'll see IPAs kind of approaching more of a, an amber color, uh, or they're really like a burnt caramely orange. But this is very pale. It's, it's, it's pretty much a golden yellow color. And there's a very slight amount of haze, but for the most part, it's virtually clear. Um, there's a good amount of carbonation in there. I can see those bubbles just kind of you know, gently floating to the top. Not a ton of head coming off of this one, um, though if you give it a, you know, a nice little swirl like that, it'll give you, a, you know, maybe one or two fingers worth. But really kind of a nice beer. You know, when I, when I review IPAs, I, I generally like to see the, the range of colors that they come in, and this one is very much on the lighter end of that spectrum. And I think one of the reasons why it's like that is that um, they use a hop extract to make uh, their beer. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail. Um, I may mess it up anyway, but um, there's information out there if you just do a search on Google for, um, you know, hop stupid and uh, hop extract and kind of find out, you know, a little bit more about that. There's a lot of discussions actually going on about it these days on Beer Advocates Forum, um, you know, claiming that Russian River is doing that as well. Anyway, belaboring the issue. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and smell it. This one is very fragrant. And when I say very fragrant, I mean tons of grapefruit. You always hear people talk about grapefruit and pine and mango and pineapple. This is very west coast to me. Very, very Pliny-ish, if you will. I'm getting a lot of grapefruit and a lot of pineapple. There's also a lot of mango, but it's clearly hops that you're smelling, you know, which is a really good thing. Loving the way it smells. And again, 359, come on guys, 359 for this bottle, it's a steal. I remember the first day I saw it on the shelves here in Kansas City, I literally bought 10 of them because I didn't know if they were going to be gone when they're gone. I didn't know if it was a limited release. Anyway, I have a bad habit of overreacting and overbuying. And so I had bought 10 of these at the time. So 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and taste it and kind of share uh, my thoughts on that. Lots of, you know, I can't even say lots of anything in this beer because really it's a good combination of everything. It's very citric. Uh, there's a lot of pineapple. There's a lot of mango. Um, there's some grassiness, like some fresh grassiness. There's some pine. It's not real dank. It's not like something you would get from, say, Modus Hopperandi or Surly Furious where those things are just, you know, they bite you on the tongue. This is, this is very kind of light. And that's one of the things, and one of the reasons why I compare this to Pliny is because Pliny does a really good job of maximizing the flavor, um, but doing it in a beer that's very light and refreshing and easy to drink. Let me tell you, this one's very easy to drink. Putting away a 22-ounce bottle of this is not a problem. Underneath all of that citrus, though, I do get a little bit of that, um, and I hate to use this expression because I'm always afraid it's going to be off-putting to people, but it almost has a sort of, um, uh, like a caramelized onion or cabbage sort of flavor, um, and it really comes from the astringency of the hops. So it's not like it really tastes like you know, onions or, but it, it reminds me of the astringency of onions, I guess I should say. Just a really good beer. Pound for pound, I'm not going to lie, this really is one of the best beers out there. And at $3.59, you could buy this beer all day. You could take a $20 bill in your local liquor store and buy like four of them and go home and be happy for you know the next three to five days I know I'm happy right now and you can see as I pour that that it just really kind of pops up with that head very respectable beer now, you know, I will take one more moment just to say, you know, make sure that when you guys are going out to your liquor stores, if you see beers like this sitting on the shelves, talk to your beer manager and say, hey, is there any way that you can put these in the refrigerator? Tell them you feel confident that over the course of the next two or three months you're going to come in and buy four or five of these, but it, that it would make you feel a lot better if they were actually sitting in refrigeration because Hops really die quickly. They're very perishable. I don't think a lot of beer stores understand that, but when you talk about hops, they really are a perishable item in the beer. In fact, they're the most perishable part of that beer. The Hop Stupid, along with many of the others, if not all of the other IPAs out there, um, do really well when they're sitting in refrigeration. They'll actually last sometimes up to six to eight months longer that way. So. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sit here, and I'm easily going to tax this bottle over the course of about the next, it's probably not even going to take me 20 minutes to finish this, but um, anyway, I want to thank you guys again for coming back to the Hoppery, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.